Good evening. I wrap Steen of Linden Associates with your late in the afternoon metal market wrap up. I can call it evening. It depends where you live. In Chicago, it's already dark and cold. And this is Thursday, and we're at the 4th of February, 2021. By the way, we're getting ready for our temperatures to plunge for the next week. Week. We are talking we won't see 20 degrees. We're talking that we might go down highs on some days, seven, but at nighttime without wind chills, minus eight, minus nine. So there's a big blast coming for a week. As that settles in, it does move across the country. So get ready for it. We're, our fear here is we have so much snow. We had uh, this afternoon more that the, the ice is just gonna be insane when this all freezes up on us. Uh, stock indices, big powerful day to the upside. This market now, it's by, it, it, the game of the GME, AMC, the cost, that game is pretty much over for the market. It doesn't mean that the Reddit folks won't come back and so on, but the fear of that is over. The regulators are looking at them. It's going to be quiet. You don't need problems. Silver, the same thing. You're over $30, you went down to $26. Uh, you got to be careful there. Gold market, not catching any bid. We keep hearing that inflation, inflation, well, the gold's not responding to it, nor is Bitcoin, really. The Fed Bitcoin is trading at 37500 right in that general area. We're looking at flat bonds notes going into tomorrow's all-important jobs uh, reports. So we saw today that the jobless claims were the lowest levels that they've been since November. Now the question is what happens with jobs data? We're looking for an increase. The consensus seems to be around the 50,000 jobs, keeping the the unemployed rate around 6.7%. Uh, I've heard whisper numbers as high as 100,000, we'll see. But a strong number could propel the dollar higher, the enemy of the gold market. Just keep that in the back of your mind. Plus the dollar's been gaining on a, a real big band of currencies. Goldman Sachs came out today and said they just view this as a blip in the market, that they continue to see weakness in the dollar for 2021. We'll see. Right now, that's not a very good. The call at the end of last year and where we're at now doesn't look good, right? In the gold, we've been staying underneath the 18-week average of closes. So in the most simplistic way of looking, where is a bias on a market? On a weekly basis, because you're under that, I say that bias is down. Now, when the bias is down and you get other signals that kick in, this acts as a filter of them and verifies them. That's the way to look at it. If you had a buy signal and your bias is down, you got two things fighting. All that I look for for bias is the relationship of price to the 18 and the weekly chart, 18 week average of closes. When we come to the daily bar, I had pointed out to you, you might be making a run for these numbers as you're now down into all this. So now you have to, if you're gonna keep breaking, it's, it's a hard chew into the rest of this. Just keep that in the back of your mind. Very difficult, too, to get all the way uh, down there. I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm saying it's a hard one to push it all the way to that level. Are we trending? No. This is what I call a vertical price break. It's when a market makes an abnormal move within a short period of time. This is for business days. Bang! down $100 an ounce. We know why it went up. The market was riding the coattail of silver at that point as the Reddit traders were pushing it up. But that lasted, as we say, a flash in the pan and the market right back down. So they're running the stops in the market. As you can see, and I pointed this out to you, you did have a bearish crossover right here. This is when the 18-day average got under the 100. The market then, in my opinion, at least owed getting under this number. That's what I've been looking for. And uh, pretty much went through that and these other numbers. Now it's looking back here to see what it's going to do. But when you get those crossovers, understand that it's, uh, there's a lot of traders that pay attention to those. I, I'm one of them. So I look at them, you'd have to have gotten back over that high to say it was a false move. And as it turned out, it wasn't. What about getting excessive to the downside? I think we're there. You closed well under the lower Bollinger Band today. Yeah, you can have the rest of the money on the downside. The odds of staying under that black bat line or over it when you get above it. 
5% of the time. What else happens? That's when the emotion of the market's taking over. You're looking at a market that just fell $100 unabated. Now you want to get short down here, thinking it's going another 100, have a great time. I know certain guys in this room that might be willing to take the other side of that bet just because you're gonna get back over that Bollinger Band. Now, you might get back over that Bollinger Band at this general area, but that's not what the percentage play is. The percentage is that you've already made the, the meat, you've taken out the filet, and now the other cuts of meat, well, they're not quite as good. Maybe you'll get something out of them. That's the way to look at it. As we look at momentum, the reason that I'm saying that is you're oversold. You're not even trying to put the blue and the red numbers both together and keeping them under 20, which would change the posture from uh, oversold to locking in a bear trend. You haven't done that. When you lock in the trends, we have another technique, and when that comes, we'll talk about that. Uh, as for the gold-silver ratio, it still favors silver. In other words, when you're under, the 18 week, well this is a daily chart, 18 day moving average of closes, it means the bias is down and these numbers get smaller. In a perfect world, you're putting up tonight 67 ounces, 67.8 ounces of silver in a grocery cart that you unfortunately stole from some grocer that is really angry with you. You're going down the same mall, I hope, giving it to the coin dealer or whoever will take it, and they're gonna give you an ounce of gold in the perfect world, no commission, boom, and if you're a good citizen, you're taking back the shopping cart, right? I know you're not, but right? That's what it's saying. So you've gone from about 127, 130 that you made last year. You've had that already. Then we look at the silver noise that happened with the Reddit scenario. And as I said, you got over $30 an ounce. You got back today to the 26. And the reason I'm not getting overly bearish here has to do with a lot of things. You've come back to what I call the line in the sand. When a market is way over an 18-day average of closes. One of the things it does is it comes back down. If it gets to that 18-day average, which is often the target, the market will hang there trying to figure out what it wants to do next. It puts its, uh, if you will, you've got your hand on your chin. When you're under the market and you come back to it, that's what it's doing right there, trying to figure out the next move. Think of it as that neutral zone in the market. So that's what you've done. You got over the Bollinger Band, you only stay 5% of the time over it, you crashed basically, now you're back to that neutral zone. In the copper market, as we know, the lunar holiday is beginning. I'm not expecting to see a lot of buying out of China at this time, but that buying will be abated just a bit. If COVID Vaccines get all over the world and they keep going out the way they are. People are expecting the economies of the world to pick up and demand to come back here. Right now, not necessarily so. Not with the holiday. Who's the world's biggest user of copper? China. So if they're consuming about half the world copper and they're going to step away from the market, have they already stepped away? Well, if they're buying now and it's coming to port, who's going to take it off? Everything gets, in other words, slow because it's a national holiday for a week or so. That's the reality of it. Uh, it some of it goes longer, but about a week. And that is what you've got to deal with. And when I tell you the country closes down, it closes down. Uh, the platinum market. If you take a look, you've had a pattern of lower highs, lower lows. The market keeps telling you it wants to make the lower part and it can't get that, if you will, the bias to stay down. So it's a battle right at the 18 day average. Am I surprised? What did I just tell you in silver? No, you fell back. That's all that you've done. That's the battleground. What am I expecting out of palladium? What if I tell you I'm expecting it to go up? to the 18 day average of closes. Why? You've lost the embedded reading. So the smart money play, quote unquote smart money, when they see that, and that began, let me take you to it, it began right here. So this was uh, the 23rd, uh, rather the 3rd of February, and this is where the market, I think the pros, came out of shorts, and now the, the, the ones that want to really take a gamble, I think they're buying, looking for price in the 18-day average to make a run at each other. They're wrong if you get under this number right here, that lowest low. The market's coming up, and you can see where you're at right now going into Friday trade. 
That's what I think they're looking at, and that wouldn't surprise me. In the dollar index, you've now got, if we come to yesterday, yesterday's settlement price was under the uh, Bollinger top the day before over. So this is called riding it. In other words, you get up to it, you get a day or so over it, then you pull back. Now, that's what I'm seeing out of the, out of the market. Could it edge its way up like I was talking to that 100-day average? It could. We have what's called price counts at the Lynn Group, and if you've never signed up for any of our information, you might want to call in and talk to one of my brokers because they can get you onto that charting service, and it's free. And we just had a chart on the dollar index two, uh, two days ago. We had said that there's upside counts. I don't want to tell you where they're at. I want you to ask for the charting service because it's there. And we are looking for that market to reach a bit higher than this yet. Uh, but it is overbought. It's over the upper bowl in Japan. Only one consecutive day. One day doesn't mean much. And why would I want to take a shot in the market or stand in front of a freight train? I don't know what tomorrow's jobs data is going to show. What if they added 200,000 jobs? Well, the dollar's gonna take off on you. I don't wanna go through it. So I wait my turn. And that, that's the hardest thing about trading for many people, patience. And most people don't have it. They think this is a casino and they gotta be in the market day in and day out. It doesn't work that way. When the trades come off of most techniques, they come in a, a flurry of them. Uh, there are techniques to trade day in and day out, and that's what they're built to do, day trading. You're not going to be able to compete with that. You don't want to, in my opinion. Swing trading is what I do. It's not day trading. A swing trade can last a week, two weeks. It can give you your profit in the same day, and it can give you the loss, I hate to say it, in the same day. When I'm wrong, I will be honest, I want to be stopped out right away and call it a day. I want that bad out of my mind so that I'm not, I'm not weighed down by it. Does it always work that way? No. But the odds of the game are that you're trying to get onto a trend, be it short term, longer term, that you can ride with reasonable risk. And that's what I do. I, I try to give you that analysis from the charting I'm seeing every morning at 540. Once I, I through recording, it comes out both on our phone systems. Yeah, you can watch it on our apps. Uh, you can see it in the different videos. And I give you the morning news. Remember, I've already read what's going on in Asia, Europe. I'm bringing it back here. I'm discussing it. I'll give you like a PowerPoint of what the day's news events are. You can always pause it, read what they're expecting out of the U.S. I'll talk a bit like today was the Bank of uh, England with their monetary policy, keeping rate unchanged. What does it mean for the market? What are they saying about growth? growth going forward. You got this in your hand within minutes of it coming out and an analysis of it. And I do that in all these markets. So I'm covering them in a way that I think makes sense. And there's a scroll bar on the bottom of these charts, by the way. You know what that scroll bar does? You can go from section to section, big letters. Remember, I'm older. I got to be able to read it. So how do you get all this? Well, it's simple. You go to our website and on our website, under the word research, the top of it, it explains everything. We have different programs you can join. You can get into the spider and the futures, the full research program, and nothing is very expensive. The idea here is to make the research not expensive. We want to get your business. You don't have to give it to us, but that's what we're looking for. Why not? We offer an awful lot of features you might like. So how do you get this? Well, it's pretty simple. Just go to irapstein.com or call us. We'll take it the rest of the way. If you call us, remind whoever you're speaking with that you want to get on that chart of the day. I think you'll like it. I'm Ira. Take care. I'll see you tomorrow.